Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an equation that uses fractional part of a number. The fractional part of x is defined as the excess beyond the number's integer part. So to give you an example, for example, suppose we have something like 1.87, then the fractional part of that number is just going to be 0.87. In other words, if you subtract the uh, floor value of x, from the number itself, then you're going to end up with the fractional part of x, okay? So you can go ahead and pause the video at this point because we're, we're about to start the solution. Okay, so we have the fractional part of 2 times the fractional part of 2x being equal to x, and we're supposed to solve for x in this case. So we're going to be looking at different cases here. Uh, first of all, we got to realize that fractional part of any number, a, let's say, is supposed to be between 0 and 1, where 0 is included, but 1 is not included. Now, when is the fractional part of a number equal to 0? When that number is an integer. So if a is an integer, then this implies that, or we can say vice versa, the fractional part of a is going to equal 0. Okay, that means it has no fractional part. Okay, so, so we're going to take a look at it then. Uh, since we have the fractional part on the outside, which needs to be between 0 and 1, this also shows that our x needs to be between 0 and 1. Okay, like this. First of all, we have to start with that. Okay, so that gives us something nice because if we multiply everything by 2 here, then we get that 2x is going to be between 0 and 2. So I'm going to basically go off of this. Uh, but of course, uh, this is a wide range, so I have kind of have to narrow it down. And obviously, you'll realize that if x equals 0, then you know that x, is, x uh, z, that's going to be a solution because the fractional part of 0 is going to be 0. Okay? So... So let's go ahead and consider uh, the first case here. If uh, the, let's just call that 1. If 2x is between 0 and 1, okay, and I can just include the 0 there, meaning that x is between 0 and 1 half, right, like this, then I will have that the floor value of this is going to be 0, right? So floor value of 2x is going to be 0. And this means that the fractional part of 2x is actually going to equal 2x minus the floor value of 2x, which is 0. So it's just going to equal 2x, right? This is 0. Okay. And so that means that the fractional part of 2x is equal to 2x. And if I go ahead and plug that in here, then I'll be getting the floor value of 4x, right? So that's going to give me the floor value of 4x is equal to x. Okay? So now we're going to need to get into more cases here. So if x is between 0 and 1 half, because that was our initial assumption, right? If x is between 0 and 1 half, which means that 4x is going to be between 0 and 2. Okay? So 4x is going to be between 0 and 2 here. Now, again, this is a wide range, so I'm going to have to break it down into two pieces. First of all, I'm going to assume that 4x is between 0 and 1, meaning that x needs to be between 0 and 1 fourth. Now, in this case, as you know, the floor value of 4x is going to be 0 again, right? Like the 2x before. And then uh, the fractional part of 4x is going to be the same as 4x, okay? So, and we knew that the fractional part of 4x was equal to x from here. So, this means that 4x is equal to x, meaning that 3x is equal to 0, and that means that x equals 0. So, we arrived our first solution here, starting with the assumption that x is uh, between 0 and 1 half. Okay? Now, the next case we're going to look at is going to be, because remember, uh, we had said that 4x between being between, uh, where did we write that? Okay, 4x being between 0 and 2 is a wide range, so we broke it down. We first said that, okay, we want it to be between 0 and 1, 
Now we're, we want it to be between one and two, okay? So four X is gonna be between one and two, meaning that X is not going to be between one fourth and one half, okay? All right, that's what it means. Now, if uh, four X is between one and two, then the floor value of four X is going to be, by the way, the floor value is the same as the greatest integer function. And there are different notations. Some, uh, sometimes it's shown as this one or even this one, but they basically all mean the same thing, the integer part of four X, okay? So in this case, it's going to equal one, okay? Meaning that the fractional part of four X is going to be the fractional part of 4x is going to be 1 less than 4x, okay? And why is that happening? Because if you remember, we define the fractional part of a number as the number itself minus its integer part, which is 1 in this case. That's why we're subtracting 1 from the 4x. And we know that uh, if you go back here, we knew that the fractional part of 4x is equal to x, right? And uh, so here, we're going to set the 4x minus 1, okay, is equal to uh, 1 in this case, okay, because uh, 4x is between 1 and 2, so that's going to equal 1 from here, and this means that 3x is equal to, I'm sorry, this is equal not 1, it should equal x, okay, so this should equal x, because uh, we had our expression here that the floor value of, I'm sorry, the integer, what am I saying? Fractional part of 4x is equal to x. And uh, here we found that the floor value of uh, 4x is one, therefore this is gonna equal x, okay? So 4x minus one is equal to x, meaning that three x is equal to one, meaning that x is equal to one third, okay? So basically, and notice that one third is actually between one fourth and one half, so it actually satisfies our equation. So we're gonna take it as our second solution, okay? So I'm gonna call this x1, and I'm gonna call this x2. And we'll just continue with more cases, okay? So number four, what I'm gonna look at is, if you remember, we had assumed that the two x is between zero and two at the very beginning, right? At the very beginning, our assumption was that two X is between zero and two, but now we used the zero and one case. Now we're gonna look at the between one and two, okay? So now two X is gonna be between one and two. In this case, uh, it means that X is gonna be between one half and one, okay? And from here, the floor value of 2x is actually going to be 1, meaning that the fractional part of 2x is going to be 1 less than 2x, right? By our general formula. So remember, we had a fractional part and then inside there was another fractional part. And this means that the fractional part of 2 times the fractional part of 2x, which is equal to 2x minus 1 here, right, equal to x. And then this is going to give us the fractional part of 4x minus 2 being equal to x. Now, we know that x is between 1 and 1 half and 1, right? So let's go ahead and write that down. x is between 1 half and 1, okay? And that means that if you multiply everything by 4, 4x is going to be between 2 and 4, okay? So... Let's subtract two from both sides. That means 4x minus two is gonna be between zero and two. Now, the reason why I'm looking into 4x minus two is because I got this equation here. So I kinda need to know the, the floor value of 4x minus two so that I can talk about the fractional part of 4x minus two here, okay? So again, we're gonna be splitting it up into two pieces and one of them is gonna be between zero and one, okay? This, this means that uh, 4x is going to be between 2 and 3, and that means that x is between 1 half and 3 fourths, okay? Now, now what does this mean for the 4x minus 2 to be between 0 and 1? It means that its floor value is going to be 0, right? And that means that 
the fractional part of 4x minus 2 is going to be the same thing as 4x minus 2, okay? So it's going to be the exact same thing. And if you knew that the fractional part of 4x minus 2 was equal to x from here, right? So we're just going to go ahead and set it equal to x. And from here, we're going to be getting 3x equal to 2 and x equals 2 thirds. And that's going to be our third solution, okay? And we're going to be looking at one more case, and that is going to come from here. If you remember, we got that 4x minus 2 is between 0 and 2, and we looked at this one. Now, we're going to be looking at the other piece, which is when the 4x minus 2 is between 1 and 2, okay? All right, so we always have to make sure that it's between two consecutive integers so that we can easily calculate the floor value. And this means that x needs to be, obviously, between 3 fourths and 1. Okay, if you add 2 to both sides, I mean everything, and then divide by 4. Okay, so we're going to proceed from here. Because the um, 4x minus 2 is between 1 and 2, its floor value is going to equal 1 from here, which means that the integer, I mean the fractional part of this guy here, is going to be 1 less, because it's always uh, less by the integer part, right? So that's going to equal 4x minus 2 minus 1, which is 4x minus 3. So in other words, if the floor value of something is 1, then its fractional part is going to be 1 less than, for example, let's think about 1.5. The fractional part of 1.5 is 1.5 minus 1, which is 0 0.5. Okay? And from here, 4x minus 3 uh, is equal to x, because if you remember, we said that the where did we say that? Okay, right here. Okay, we said that the fractional part of 4x minus 2 is equal to x because that's what came from our original equation. And now we're going to set it equal to x here like this. Okay, so this gives us a really nice equation because I can subtract x. This gives me 3x equals 3 and x equals 1. And that's going to be our fourth solution, x to, x fourth is one. Let's go ahead and write down all the solutions here. I'm going to go ahead and list them for you. Our solution set is going to be consisting of zero. That's going to be the solution set. One third, two thirds, and one. Those are all the possible solutions. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. And see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.